Number 16. On a certain dry sunny day, a swimming pool temperature would rise by 1.5 degrees Celsius if not for evaporation. What fraction of the water must evaporate to carry away precisely enough energy to keep the temperature constant? All right. So this one's a little tricky. Um, but basically what's going on here is that they're trying to say that pretend you have a swimming pool here and it's going to be filled with water. Okay. Now there's the sun is shining. Okay. So the sun here, it's shining. All right. It's going to be heating up the pool from radiant heat. Um, and the, the water should rise in temperature. Okay. If the water doesn't evaporate. Now, how does evaporating water lead to then, if you think about it, lead to a reduction then of temperature more or less. It's not really a reduction, but you can think of it that way. Because remember, in order to take the liquid water molecules, they're in the liquid state up here, in order to take them and convert them into the gaseous state, in which we'd have to add energy to them, right, in order to move them into the gaseous state because they're moving faster, basically, we would need to input energy. Okay, energy would have to be placed into that process. And that kind of makes sense, right? To boil something or, I mean, it doesn't have to boil, so I shouldn't really use the term boil. But in order to evaporate something, because you know, right, if you left, if you had a glass of water here and you left it out, right, overnight or, for, well, not necessarily overnight, but for maybe a week or two, the water would disappear, right? Where did it go? It didn't boil, right? But it still evaporated. So that it's a little more complicated than, uh, than I might be letting on here. But in any case... Um, the water here would evaporate, and if the water molecules evaporate, meaning they convert from a liquid phase into a gaseous phase, um, it takes with it energy, okay? So you can think about, like, energy leaving the pool, basically. All right. Hopefully armed with that now, with a whole bunch of arrows and so on and so forth, which, sure. Um, hopefully now we might be able to see how we can begin to set this up, Okay. Basically, what we're saying is that the temperature, we're trying to figure out how much water evaporates. Now, remember, when water evaporates, okay, I'll call this the heat of, we'll just call it vaporization, all right? When the water evaporates or vaporizes, there's going to be, it's going to be losing uh, energy, meaning the, the liquid water, okay, from the perspective of the liquid water. And then that has to equal now the heat energy gained by the liquid water itself, okay? This is the crux of the problem. Now, this should be positive, basically, that's negative, but honestly, don't worry about the signs here. It's not really that important. The signs are just directional, more or less. Heat transferred, you know, heat gained or heat lost. But this is really the formula that I'm trying to get at. So, so basically, um, because remember, heat isn't, law, you know, heat is just transferred. So basically, the heat um, that, I, I could say this, the heat that the water is losing, more or less, right, is being gained then uh, through vaporization, all right? In other words, the vapor is, but you can flip the coin and say the uh, vaporization is then pulling energy out of the system, okay? Uh, anyway, let's just get down to the calculation. So the vaporization formula is up here, it's the latent heat. So that's equal to the mass that vaporizes, okay, or evaporates, multiplied then by the latent heat of vaporization. And that should equal then, this is for liquid water and for liquid, right, when we're talking about uh, changing temperatures of a liquid, solid, or gas, right, it doesn't matter as long as it stays in the same state, we're talking about that formula over there. So this would then be the mass of the water, okay, liquid water in the pool, uh, multiplied by the specific heat of that water, multiplied by then the change in temperature of that water. So basically, we're trying to find the fraction of water that must evaporate. So fraction of water that must evaporate sounds like we're solving for a fraction here, right? And what's the fraction? Well, a fraction of the, the mass, right? What fraction of the water? So what, what about the water? The volume of the mass? Well, we're talking about the mass here. So basically, I need to solve this thing for M, the mass of vaporization, over the mass of the water. Now that's just a simple division, right? So basically, I just got to bring this term out of the numerator there down to the denominator on the left-hand side, then bring this term in the numerator on the left, bring it down into the denominator on the right. Okay, just some simple cross multiplications. So this is C delta T, and this is of water, all then divided by 
uh, all then divided by the latent heat of vaporization. And now we have our formula that we need. So let's just plug it all in, okay? So a specific heat of, of liquid water is 4,184 joules, blah, 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 blah. The change in temperature of this water would have been 100, uh, excuse me, 1.5 degrees Celsius, right? Because that's what it says it rose by or would have risen by. And therefore, that's now divided by the latent heat of vaporization of water. So that's going to be 2256 right from the table. But be careful, that's in kilojoules. Okay, so you got to be careful. Multiply that by 10 to the um, third to get it into joules. All right, please be careful with that. So this is then 4184 multiplied by 1.5 divided then by 2256 times 10 to the third. And you're going to see a nice tiny little fraction here, right? So this is 0 0.00. .00 278, 278, and that's the answer, all right? That's the mass that has the vaporized relative to the mass of the liquid water. So literally only about three or so thousandths, all right, of the total mass of this liquid water has to evaporate so that the temperature doesn't change of that liquid water. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this video helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.